So today I've got this Panasonic LCD projection TV here. It's only a 43 inch, but the problem is that um, occasionally it gets this message up on the screen. Well, it's given the message now that the lamp needs to be reset, but just after that, um, we get this message on the screen that's telling us that the uh, air filter is clogged. So here's the message, air filter cleaning is recommended at this time. First turn the unit off, please call for service. Unit will be turned off after one minute. So if you don't heed this warning, uh, the set will shut itself off very shortly. So I thought I'd talk to you about uh, cleaning the air filter in these Panasonic LCD projection TVs. And this is the model that uses the uh, TYLA1000 lamp, by the way. All right, so now that we've got the back off of this set, you can kind of see here why it might need a cleaning. And um, I'll show you how to get the optical block out of here and how to actually do the cleaning on it. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's got a little bit of dust in it here. So it's been around. One thing you want to pay very close attention to, and this applies to the um, sets that end in like LC13 and LC14, is this little warning right here that talks about disconnecting the 20 pin cable which is the LVDS cable, and um, I'll show you where that is and what that means. So we're just going to start by removing the bracket from the back here. All right, got the bracket removed off the back. We'll look at the screws that uh, removing those that hold in the ballast. On the LC13 model, there's a single screw right there. This is an LC14, so it doesn't have those. So the four screws on the sides, now the ballast is loose. Take the two screws out of the lamp holder so that uh, you can just simply pull the plug loose uh, from the lamp. It holds the lamp socket in place. They're up in here. You have to be careful. They're kind of short screws. Uh, they're not as long as the rest of them. They have a special plastic thread. Uh, when you put these back on, be, be really careful uh, screwing these into place because uh, there's not much plastic for them to grab onto. All right, so here's the LVDS cable that I was talking about. Uh, you have to be very careful on both ends of this. Let me try to turn the camera a little bit here. And it's really easy to unplug. It, there's no squeeze or anything on these. It just simply pulls straight out both ends. Anyhow, it's a very thin, very fine cable, and what happens is it flexes on the ends like this, and then it just breaks off. So you have to be very careful. When you put it back in, it is keyed. It only goes in one direction, so be very aware of this. Okay, now we'll have to take the chassis out of the set to get the ballast unplugged. So there's going to be one screw down here I've already removed, as well as one screw here. You want to lift the chassis up very slightly and then pull it straight back. There's going to be cables over here on the other side that are kind of twist tied together and with purse locks. Unplug the speakers, the jack panels. All these need to be disconnected and the keyboard. So once they're all up and out of the way, at that point, the chassis can come back quite a ways. You'll have to unplug this cable from the engine itself. This is the power supply to the engine. Once that's done, you can actually take the ballast and the, and the uh, chassis completely out of the TV. All right, next we'll talk about removing the engine from the TV. There are two screws, you need a long handled screwdriver to get up in here. Two screws there you need to remove. One on the bottom. Another one on the bottom. Oh, and there is one more long screw buried up in here. Let's see if you can see that with the camera. There's actually two screws you can see right there. It's the bottom one. You don't have to take the top one out. 
And then on the earlier models, there was also a, a cable you needed to unplug right here. That's the door safety switch. And you can pull the whole engine back. You'll have to lift up on it just like the other one. Lift up slightly. And then the whole engine, make sure that little switch doesn't get caught. They're very fine wires. The whole engine comes out. And there you can see the wires. Um, I've already taken and blown the dust out of this with the blower once, but I'm going to take it back out and get the rest of the dust down here. And then we'll talk about cleaning the actual filters and where they are. Okay, so I've got the engine out of the set. We're going to start by taking out these four screws right here. This just moves this little air uh, duct up and out of the way. Go ahead and take these four screws out right here. This hurt holds the first uh, filter in place. This is actually the exit filter. So there's a, a, a intake and exhaust kind of filter. So this is the exhaust filter. And kind of hard to see if it's got anything in it right now, but uh, I can assure you that it does. And I'll show you cleaning those as well. Next, we're going to take these two screws out from the LCD. Let me turn this around to show you the other side. Four more screws on the opposite side. Seems kind of redundant, but I'll show you why. Oops, dropped one. This thing you've got to kind of peel backwards. It's held on with tape, so you just got to kind of pull the tape off. Once you get that off, you'll find two more screws. Then this whole thing can be lifted off. There we go. And this exposes the LCD optic block assembly. Uh, if you've seen my other videos about the Sony uh, SXRD and the Sony LCD, then you know that uh, that right there, it, it's virtually the same. And uh, other than we hardly have any failures uh, with the Panasonic office blocks, I've had only just a couple. There we go. We're going to start by taking out two screws right here. One, two. One in the back right here. There's two more screws on the other side of the optical block that come out. You need to take out the screws along the bottom of the lamp casing. One screw in the back, disconnect the ground cable, uh, release the fan so it's going to be separate and then we can pick this whole optic block off at one time. So we can pick up this whole optical block and lift it off and so let's go ahead and I'll take those out now. Okay, so I've got everything loose now and I'm just going to reach up here in the middle and pick up the whole optical block and just set the fan assembly and the rest of the base aside for now. And then if we flip this thing upside down at this point, be careful about the lens. Um, this is the main filter and you can actually, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but just as I touch it, you can see the dust coming off of it. So this is the main one that we need to clean. Um, in addition to that fan, if you look in that fan, you can see how much dust. That's actually the lamp fan. It blows air through this little slot right here, and that's where the lamp uh, fly eye lens is. So um, let's talk about removing this filter. What we're going to have to do is take a razor blade and come in here and cut this foam tape so that this can be taken off. But before we do that, we have to remove this little air diverter. Uh, with these three screws right here. This directs the air from the fan and up through the LCD filter, L LCD panels and polarizing filters. There's also a second small filter up here on top and we'll clean that as well. Okay, so I've got the, um, got the light engine out here by the back door and I've got my shop vac here and it, I use it as a blower to blow the dust out. So. I have um, I've already sliced all the pieces of tape and everything, so this is loose. It can be lifted up. 
and um, let's see if I can raise this up here. You can't really see much light through it. So let me uh, let me turn on the shop vac, try to blow some dust, blow some air through there, and see if uh, any of it clears up. So I hope you could see with the uh, video of how much dust was trapped in that filter. Let me go get the uh, last one real quick and we'll blow it out too. Okay, so let's just tip this camera back up here and uh, you can see a little bit of light through there. So you can certainly see how that amount of dust clogging through these filters can really obstruct the airflow and cause the set to want to shut down. Now um, let's go ahead and put everything back together and we'll see how it goes. Okay, we've got our engine all cleaned up and ready to go. Remember to watch out for that little cable when you're reinstalling the engine. It's got to kind of wrap its way around that little piece of mounting bracket that plugs in back here in the corner. Don't forget about the two upper screws. It keeps the uh, air cavity clean. And a tip for uh, reinstalling when you reinstall the chassis it has this little door uh, if you open the door about halfway like that not all the way and not all the way closed uh, it makes it easier to reinstall the chassis so here's our set all running it's all ready to go no message on the screen anymore Much cleaner inside now than what we were looking at before. Quite filthy. Um, there are three different types of these small screws that this set uses. There's machine thread, plastic thread, and metal threaded screws. And you can tell by the coarseness of the threads as to what types go where. So just pay particular attention to that. And. Um, Let's see, what else can I tell you about these sets? If you get one that um, just inexplicably shuts down and begins blinking one blink uh, with the power light, uh, check the fan. That one blink means a uh, fan problem. There's three leads on these fans. Red and black are obviously power and ground. The yellow is the fan rotation sensor. So put your meter on the yellow lead and watch that voltage. If it um, if it rises to above about a volt and a half, then the fan could be defective or stuck even. The voltage normally stays very close to zero when the fan is operating normally. So you've got the three fans, the exhaust fan, the lamp fan, and the LCD fan that you can check. So here's a list of some error codes if you encounter problems on this set. You can kind of freeze frame this and look these over real close. See if you have any of these symptoms. And that pretty much wraps up 
this video. Thanks for watching. And on this model, there was just one more quick thing I wanted to show you, and that's uh, lamp timer reset. This one's never been reset. And um, on this model, it involves using the remote control, obviously. They all do. Uh, what you do is you press the volume down on the TV itself, on the buttons there. And on this particular model, you press and hold the PIP, or excuse me, the split play button on this one. If, if the model ended in a 13 or a 63, then you would hold the PIP button. So on this one, you find and hold the split play button right here, as well as the volume down on the TV. So I'll press those two buttons simultaneously. And then the message pops up and says lamp time was reset to zero. If you want to actually check the lamp time, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so to actually check the lamp time on this model, it's done with the volume down button and you hold the TV video button simultaneously when the set is off and cooled down. It can't be in the cool down state. It has to be completely off and the fan stopped. So I just press and hold those two buttons down for about five seconds. Power light turns green and it starts blinking. The lamp's lit, you can tell by the flash. And then you can see the on-screen display up here. I just reset it, so current lamp. Um, total uh, L on count is uh, 6,804. That means that's how many times it's been turned on and off. Let's see. Now if we go to page two, then you can see it blinking right there. Uh, 25,710 hours is the total lamp time that this set had on it. And to go page up, page down, just move, um, use the channel up and channel down buttons on the TV. So once again, thanks for watching and hopefully this will keep a few more sets out of the landfill.